And to tell us more about the meeting with the IOC as well as the latest on the PyeongChang Winter Olympics, Dr. Bong Yong Shik, a researcher at the Yonsei Institute for North Korean Studies, joins us in the studio today. Welcome to the program. How are you? All right, so the meeting between the delegations from the two Koreas and Olympic officials wrapped up uh, in Switzerland on Saturday. Now tell us more about this meeting and what came out of it. Uh, the meeting went really smoothly. I guess uh, the, the governments in the IOC headquarters uh, came to uh, their agreements quite uh, fast. Uh, most important development is the agreement to uh, or have a unified uh, women's ice hockey team uh, without uh, diminishing the number of the South Korean athletes participating in the, the event, mm. uh, which is 20, 23, but only add uh, uh, 12 uh, extra uh, members from North Korea. So the entire roster uh, will be 35. And uh, Switzerland and Japan, who will face uh, the unified Korean team, uh, issued a protest that this is not fair because mm -hmm. they only have the a roster composed of the uh, 23 you know, athletes as opposed to 35. Mm. But uh, I believe that the uh, uh, South Korean government and North Korean government's uh, priority is to make this um, you know, joint celebration uh, combining not only the spirit of the sports but also inter-Korean relations. Uh, so all in all, uh, North Korea will send 46 uh, members. Um, you know, 22 of them will be athletes uh, competing in five events, and uh, uh, 24 members uh, who are, you know, staff, uh, coach, and the uh, reporters. Okay. Well, and now a seven-person delegation from North Korea, led by the head of the Murambong Band, Hyun Song Wal, uh, was scheduled to cross the border into South Korea on Saturday, but now this visit was abruptly canceled the evening before, but then Hyun and the delegation ended up crossing the border on right. Sunday. What happened here? Well, I can't really uh, read the, the minds of the North Korean authority because it's uh, the most opaque uh, system, uh, but uh, it, it has been reported that the North Korean authority wanted to increase the bargaining leverage on South Korean government by uh, dictating uh, the schedule and the format of the inspection visit. Mm. And they also uh, express uh, um, you know, discontent about the way uh, the South Korean media ha has been portraying uh, North Korea's participation in the PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games. Mm. But I believe that uh, such uh, you know, behavior by North Korean government only uh, shoot themselves at their feet because um, it is very important for North Korean authority to uh, project the uh, image of peace and cooperation uh, if it wants to you know, uh, celebrate jointly the PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games and uh, try to you know, um, you know, project the image that the North Korean people are also pe uh, peace-loving you know, people uh, so that uh, economic sanctions and uh, possible military actions in the name of denuclearization on North Korea mm. will be too harsh. Right. So uh, projecting very um, you know, harsh image or the engaging in a you know, uh, you know, negative tactics towards the South Korean government, uh, which must be the best helping hand for North Korea uh, under the current circumstances, uh, will be a backfire. Mm, it won't help them that much, no. right? All right. Well, Seoul will also be dispatching an advanced inspection team on, tu team on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. So, what will be what will the team be doing there? Well, it will be a delegation composed of the um, you know 12 members led by the director of the unification division in the Ministry of National Unification, Mr. Yi Ju Tae. And the main mission is inspecting the facility of the Kumgang uh, you know, Art Center mm. and tourist site and the, the uh, Masingyang Ski Resort uh, for the joint events, uh, the concert in the Mount Kumgang tourist site and the joint training of the skiers from both sides in the Masingyang Ski Resort. Mm, I know you just mentioned it, but what significance does the joint cultural event in the Mount Kumgang region hold for inter-Korea relations? Um, it's, uh, uh, it has many layers. One, uh, it is the expression of the joint celebration of the PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games. Uh, and the second, um, logistically, it is very important uh, for both Koreas to actually agree to open up uh, three main uh, uh, land route uh, that connecting both sides. Mm. One is the West Coast route, and the other one, which is called the Gyeonggi Line, uh, that has long been used as a main you know, uh, lane for the Kaesong Industrial Complex, uh, which has been shut down uh, since February 2016 in the aftermath of North Korea's nuclear test and missile test. Mm. And uh, uh, the, another uh, communication and transportation line has been the Panmunjom Line, and the third one uh, is what you just mentioned, the uh, East Coast Line, uh, 
uh, that connects the uh, mountain Gyeonggang area mm. and the uh, uh, southern uh, part, part of South Korea. So uh, although it's a very symbolic and uh, temporary, but opening up all three main uh, landlines uh, uh, by the agreement uh, of the both government has a very symbolic significance. Mm. And going along with that, I mean, I, I know those lines are opened up temporarily, but do you see chances of them being opened up permanently after? Well, this? there has been wild speculation, especially in the South Korean media, uh, that uh, this will eventually lead the, uh, the lot of the uh, resumptions of the uh, previous inter-Korean co economic cooperation projects, mm. such as the resumption of the Kaesong Industrial Complex or the uh, rebooting the tour program and Mountain Gyeonggang and whatnot. But uh, we have to wait and see because, uh, as uh, President Moon Jae-in himself uh, clearly announced in his uh, New Year's uh, press conference, that all these measures uh, cannot be changed because these measures are in the framework of the United Nations Security Council resolutions, i.e. the economic sanctions on North Korea. Mm. Uh, although, uh, uh, technically speaking, um, uh, dispatching the athletes, skiers, to the uh, Mashingyang Ski Resort is in violation of the so-called May 24 measures, uh, which bars any uh, visit by private South Korean citizens to any part of North Korea without government's uh, approval. Mm. Uh, but it's a temporary relaxing of the May 21st measure. But um, it is still uh, very uh, uncertain how these temporary measures will lead to any concrete outcomes in the future. Mm. Now, what about the military talks, which the two sides during their first face-to-face -face on January 9th agreed to hold? But what's the latest on that? Well, that's a, a very good question, and it has been quite strange that the North Korean authority has been extremely hesitant and reluctant to you know, move along with these two uh, items. One is the acceleration of the you know, military to military talk and the uh, family reunion program. Uh, with regards to these two agendas, North Korean authority has been extremely slow and passive. Mm. Um, I guess um, um, the main reason is that there is a gulf. Uh, between uh, what South Korean government wants to achieve in the military-to-military -military talk, which is the, uh, the uh, prevention of the accidental military conflicts, mm. and what North Korea uh, wants to have in the military-to-military -military talk, which is to a uh, termination of the annual you know, joint uh, military exercises by the U.S. forces in South Korea and South uh, and U.S. military and mm. the South Korean military. So I guess uh, North Korean authorities own you know, strategic uh, judgment is that there is no need to rush into these two agendas. Mm. And I guess uh, questions lie over what path the two Koreas will end up taking after the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Yeah, there is a growing concern that uh, this might be just uh, peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula uh, that can only last two months during the uh, para, uh, Pyeongchang Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. And well, we have to wait and see. The big strategy uh, for Moon Jae-in government is to make this as a good bridge between uh, thawing the tension between the two Koreas and the uh, uh, beginning of the meaningful uh, bilateral uh, negotiations, mm. diplomatic negotiation between Washington and Pyongyang on the issue of denuclearization of North Korea. But uh, if uh, North Korea will go back to its uh, usual attitude, um, uh, including resumption of the uh, provocations mm. and uh, uh, additional test of uh, ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles or uh, new nuclear tests, and all bets, all bets uh, will be off the table, uh, then the arguments in favor of you know, toughening up the economic sanctions and even considering taking military actions on North Korea mm -hmm. uh, will gain traction because uh, the entire uh, world would say that we gave South Korea and North Korea a chance, uh, but the chance has been wasted. Mm -hmm. So we have no alternative but to you know, um, ta right, take mm -hmm. uh, tougher sanctions and other measures. Mm. Now, according to government sources, North Korea plans to host a series of military events uh, in celebration of the 70th anniversary of Korean People's Army in Pyongyang just a day before the opening of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. What can we make of this? Well, if I were working for the North Korean government, uh, which I do not, mm -hmm. uh, I would advise the North Korean authority, uh, you know, should uh, uh, think twice. Because, as I said before, that 
it will under it, it will under only undercut the efficacy of this peace offensive initiated by the North Korean government. Uh, look at uh, Mr. Hyun Song Wong. Uh, projecting very warm, you know, approachable, peaceful image. Mm. Um, you know, thanking uh, citizens of the city of the Gangneung. They were so warm. Uh, on the other hand, the North Korean media has been lashing the South Korean government conservative, you know, members at the National Assembly and the media uh, for you know false news and right. uh, defamation as well, uh, calling them garbage. Mm. So if North Korea go goes ahead. With the, uh, the military parade in celebration of the 70th anniversary of the foundation of the nation, then it will spoil the other aspects of its peace offensive toward uh, South Korea and the world mm -hmm. during the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games. So it will be a uh, backfire. It will be a uh, backlash to you know, North Korean government itself. Mm. Now critics also say that although talks on the Olympics with North Korea have been going smoothly, we can't let our guards down. Considering that North Korea has threatened before to withdraw from the Olympics and also strongly criticized mm. President Moon Jae-in for his remarks on unwavering sanctions on North Korea's nuclear development program. So, uh, what are some of the existing concerns over the North's participation in the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics? Well, as I said, that uh, North Korea uh, may not be ready to, you know. Deal with uh, Moon Jae-in government of South Korea as it is, not as it hope uh, it is, mm -hmm. because Moon Jae-in government uh, is based upon the uh, uh, wide and strong, you know, consensus of support of people, and uh, Moon Jae-in government's uh, mandate is a people-centered national security policy and economic policy. So North Korea uh, should not just uh, uh, demand Moon Jae-in government uh, go back to, you know, 2000. Mm -hmm. June 15, when uh, you know there was a first inter-Korean summit meeting, although North Korean officials tried to you know uh, remind South Korean government that uh, we have to go back to the spirit of the national solidarity uh, in 2000, mm -hmm. but a lot of things have happened uh, in the past 18 years, and Moon Jae-in government it has is the probably the uh, you know, biggest beneficiary of the cumulative you know changes of Korean society, including the a great uh, candlelight you know, demonstration, right. uh, revolution. Mm. So Moon Jae-in government has a mandate to serve. And uh, Moon Jae-in government cannot just uh, unilaterally and unconditionally you know, uh, you know, receive and realize all kinds of demands made by uh, South Co North Korean authority mm. in the name of moving toward you know, national unification. Mm. Uh, the South Korean society and population demand you know, fairness, justice, and compassion. And Moon Jae-in government promised those, you know, mm. uh, values to, you know, South Korean people. Mm. So North Korean government has to, you know, devise and revise its uh, engagement with South Korea, uh, more uh, focus on actual improvement of the inter-Korean uh, relations, and uh, making the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games truly a successful global event, not mm. just the inter-Korean event. Mm. I mean, there has been some controversy and even opposition from within South Korea in regards to the North participating in the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Do you think the government has been handling this well? In that um, uh, it has been uh, sloppy and disappointing, uh, honestly speaking, because um, uh, Moon Jae-in uh, government announced its intention to invite North Korean athletes and delegation um, in June last year. Mm. So although there had not been official confirmation by North Korean government until uh, December last year, and uh, uh, the actual decision was delivered in the New Year's uh, message uh, by uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un. But Moon Jae-in government had at least six months to prepare for all these contingencies, including mm. the controversies uh, surrounding the government's unilateral decision without prior consultation with the, uh, the athletes and coach of the women's ice hockey team to make the unified team with the North Korean athletes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it really hurts the um, credibility uh, and the image of the Moon Jae-in government because uh, the biggest the political capital of this government has been that this government is different from the previous government in terms right. of you know, good communication uh, with people, uh, people-centered approach, and uh, compassion. Now, people will question whether this government is just uh, one of many same governments, mm. uh, as uh, well illustrated by the plummeted you know, approval rating by uh, about the 6% in the last two weeks. Right. So uh, unless uh, the Moon Jae-in government is going to handle the damage already done 
by all these decisions to accommodate the participation of the North Korean athletes and delegation, then even after successful you know, Winter Olympic Games, the Moon Jae-in government's uh, you know, political capital has to be replenished. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for your insight today. You're welcome.